everything. There is no shaming. Shame, shame is a tool that is normally used by a community that has ethics. Yes. If there's no shaming, that means there's no ethics. If you can't look at the actions of someone that goes against the values that you say you believe and they say they believe and not be able to shame them or not be able to correct them, then what's the point? You don't have a community. You have a bunch of individuals who are forced to live with each other. Let's talk about religious scammers. Mm, now, I I find this personal because there are, this ruins the black community. They're selling mm -hmm. you prosperity. Not only are they selling you prosperity, they are also attributing a false doctrine to the community mm -hmm. that is continuously suppressing their 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 rights to what society and their religion should be like like being okay if you. If you're a Christian, and look, I, I I love my homosexuals. If you're a Christian, we all know homosexualism is not supposed to be there. But because you're toting that line, you're not truly helping the community by being consistent with the message. Then everybody says it's all fake. If you're only con going towards the women and having sex with the women, then you're you're not helping the community. You're putting the men back. If you are telling the community to spend your last dollar and put it in the pot and it will multiply 10 times, mm -hmm. it can be your belief. I, I'm a Christian. I understand that. But some of these preachers will pass the collection pot, lock the doors <laughs> until they bleed, <laughs> until they bleed every last cent out of you. Mm. And I'm sorry. This ruins the black community because it... Yeah. it it, it it erodes on edge uh, the religious value system of black and the mm -hmm. spiritual system because you cannot graze a community without those. We talk about economics. You can have an economic system. You can have money and cars, but when you have a spiritually dead system or community, it is not going to survive longer than any time. Yeah, I, I agree. The sad thing is, the black church, and when I say black church, now you could just put any other faith under it, but I'm going to say black church. The black church was the fundamental building block of the black community in the past. Mm -hmm. And to see what has happened to the black church mm -hmm. is just a tragedy because it has lost it's moral high ground. It had a standing that when the black church spoke, it can speak out against the hypocrisies of this world, particularly of this country. Now when the black church speaks, it has no authority past the most, you know, faithful of the faithful of their flock. Mm -hmm. But outside the doors, no one cares what the black church has to say because it lost its moral high ground. And 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 I think also I think also we we run into nonprofit mm -hmm. churches who, who are using PPP loans and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's be real <laughs> we they they are now running for profit a nonprofit organizations. Yeah. Yeah, that are well, not really servicing their community because let's mm -hmm. be honest, some of them get money and grants to service the community and they do not release the funds into the community because they are then sliding it to their best friend's family. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think this ties back to something that, uh, you know, the, the late Kevin Samuels said, uh, you know, about a year or so ago when he talked about how the pastor's refuse to share power. In the past, the black church was extremely strong when mm -hmm. there was a board that was helping to run the church. You would have professionals within the community that would be on 
the board. You would have a pastor that would be the moral strength. They would be able to read the word and preach the word. But then you would have the local accountant in the community would, who would be the treasurer. You would have a local attorney in the community that would also be on the board. There would be counsel and there was not just one person making all the choices in dealing with stuff. But because there was a lack of understanding of the power of that board and there is a exodus of black males in the church, you're left with a male pastor surrounded by females who is not only preaching, but he also wants to control the money. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, where are we going to get the money from? And if we have to get the money from a government source, now we're beholden to look good for the government. Yeah. And if we're stuck with only getting money from a very strong female base, then maybe I can't teach masculinity the way it needs to be taught. See, now you didn't compromise yourself. We're not even getting on the straight scammers. I'm talking about someone who's a pastor with genuine intent, but he's compromised based on the financial realities because the mortgage got to get paid. The lights got, the light bill got to get paid. This stuff costs money to actually operate, but because of an unwillingness to share power. Yeah they fall into a place where now they have to go with trending topics and not where the word really is. And they have to bow down to the government because that's another source of funding that they got. Now we got to go to the actual scammers, the grifters, the ones who know that all they have to do- Hey, is I, need a, I need a jet, JT. I need a jet to go cross country. <laughs> I wear these Versace. Yeah. <laughs> I need 55 these Versace shoes. Do you see my $1.5 million house? Matter of fact, is that a guy with a gun? Let me get down. I gotta get... <laughs> Listen, man. I mean, that that goes to show you how the priorities of our community are so backwards. Yes. If you can go to a upstairs church <laughs> where the pastor and his wife have a mil a million dollars. Some people say it's a, a it's an insurance fraud, but let me just take him at his at his word. Yeah, a million dollars worth of jewelry between him and his wife. I I, I could never in my life attend a, a church in that in that uh, situation. I couldn't do it. It does not make sense. It, it, it but that can exist in a world where everything is okay. Everything there is no shaming. Shame. Shame is a tool that is normally used by a community that has ethics. Yes. If there's no shaming, that means there's no ethics. If you can't look at the actions of someone that goes against the values that you say you believe and they say they believe and not be able to shame them or not be able to correct them, then what's the point? You don't have a community. You have a bunch of individuals who are forced to live with each other as long as everything is good, but the second something bad happens, you scurry away like rats. Mm -hmm. Let me let me let me give a shout out to my guy Chicago Rilla. He is also another Black Pride member. Shout hey, out to Chicago Rilla. Yeah, but um, you know you're absolutely right. I think it ruined. Like, I know we talk about scammers, and mm -hmm. and a lot of times the loss of money is not just the only thing that we lose. Sometimes we lose our community, our rights, our, our dignity, and then man, this is, it goes deeper. So I'm, I'm glad you're on the same page with me on this yeah. because, you know, this is not just about losing money. This is about losing a, a, a staple of a community that once you need to come back to for reinforcement yeah. of moral fabric. And yeah. once you see the people in there are corrupt, then you go. Yeah. You so go, you, you don't know. you don't want to come back. Yeah. It's horrible. And, and, and it's, not, it's and, sad. It's sad because the greatest things that have ever happened to the African American community, most of them, maybe not a hundred percent, but in the high 90 percentile, originated in the black church. Yeah. You can't say that today. And it's sad.
Yeah, I, I mean, you, if um, I was just in Atlanta and just speaking to uh, a couple of people th through the the visitors tours and whatnot, they spoke about how mm -hmm. you know Ebenezer and a lot of churches got started and they influenced Peachtree all the way up to downtown. Mm -hmm. With, you know, one sprouted out, one sprouted out, one sprouted out, business sprouted out, and they're all either financed by the community. But once you destroy or take away the community, take away the the businessman, and you take away the tax man, and you take away the husband the or the entrepreneur man, yeah. you no longer have a community within the church, and that church cannot reciprocally give it back, give yeah. the same stuff back to this yeah. community. You'll, ne you'll never see the black dollar be able to circulate in the way that it should because there is no real community. I'm tired of people talking about, man, they do it for the culture. There is no culture. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's no real culture. It's just a bunch of people in grifters that use the term the culture and all this. That's just another selling point. That's just another tagline that they're using to take dollars from your pocket and put it in theirs. If there was a real culture, values would come before all the other BS. But we don't see values being upheld because it's all about getting to the bag by any means necessary, even if it does mean having questionable ethics all the way to the point of being illegal. That's the problem.